Hey, Coach Colin Castell here with ShopMechanics.com, and welcome to episode two of the Ask Coach C series. Today, we're going to talk about transitioning to high school basketball. We're going to talk about developing a mid-range jumper, and we're going to talk about how to get inside the offensive player's head when you're on defense. <laughs> All right, so first question comes from Edwin, and he's looking to move from middle school basketball to high school basketball. Now, the high school coach already knows him, and he wants to know what he can do to make for a smooth transition. First of all, awesome question. This is something that a lot of people have to think about when they're moving on to the high school level. Now, there's a lot of stuff to think about when it comes to this. The number one thing is your body. Um, your body's changing, and as you get into high school, you're going to start needing to develop it a little bit. Now, um, depending on your size, you might not want to fully start lifting weights yet, but you definitely want to at least get started with things like uh, body weight stuff, so you know, push-ups, pull-ups, all that sort of stuff to start kind of toning your body. Now, in basketball, you don't want to be bulky strong. You want to be basketball strong, which we think about speed and explosion. Um, I know a world-renowned speed and strength expert who says that you can do everything basketball needed just off of your body weight. So that's number one. You want to start thinking about your body. Number two, you want to start developing your basketball IQ. Now, um, middle school, a lot of the times, is more just kind of playing fast and loose. Um, you know, a lot of middle school coaches don't do a whole lot of um, you know, teaching specific concepts and offense and that sort of thing. It's more of a time to learn how to play the game. Once you get to high school, there's a lot more IQ side that the coaches are going to need you to know. Uh, you know, things like time and score, foul situations, when to, you know, trap, when not to trap, all that sort of stuff. So I would really start developing your basketball IQ right now. You can develop your IQ a few different ways. You know, number one, just start watching a lot of basketball, you know, so whether it's NBA, college, um, even high school games right now, start watching a lot of basketball and, and and paying attention to the things that you maybe haven't paid attention to before, like uh, the communication the coach is giving, maybe the, the analysis on TV. Um, there's a lot of really good nuggets that you can start pick up basketball IQ-wise that will probably help you out. Um, the next thing you gotta think about is start being very, very, very comfortable with talking on defense. Every high school coach across the nation loves somebody who can talk on D, and it's something that middle schoolers, quite frankly, are terrible at. Um, you know, so the, the sooner you learn how to talk on D, communicate, the better that transition is going to be when you get on the high school court. So start learning to talk on D and that'll help you out quite a bit. All right, question number two, Christian asks, hey coach, I'm a pretty good shooter from long range, but when I try a close or a mid range jumper, it doesn't go in. Just wondering what I need to adjust. All right, awesome question. This is something that a lot of people struggle with when it comes to the mid range jumper. Um, now the hardest thing about the mid range jumper is you don't really get a whole lot of wide open mid range jumpers just by the way that everyone's spaced on the court. I think that's one of the mistakes that people make when they train is they only shoot these you know, catch and shoot wide open 15 footers, but the problem is nobody really gets those in a game. Just because the, sp the spacing's not spread out enough, generally if you're shooting a 15 foot jumper, somebody's gonna be in your area. Um, so the number one thing to think about is your 15 footer's gotta be a little bit different than your three pointer. Um, most people like to get a little bit of extra arc on their 15 footer. That way uh, it gets over to the defender, gets a little bit of extra soft bounce when it hits the rim, um, and it gives the ball a little bit better of a chance of getting there and going in. Now, with that being said, you don't want it to be dramatically different. Uh, most of the time you just get more lift with the pop off of your feet, maybe shoot a little bit higher than you would on your three pointer. Um, other than that, it's just about reps, and not only that, but getting good reps with um, a defender guarding you. So most of the time, if you're shooting a 15-footer, it's probably going to be off of a step back or an isolation or a separation or something like that where you're getting away from the defender. So those are the reps that you want to be practicing. Just catch and shoot 15-footers, probably not going to get those in game. All right, next question comes from Ty Bauer. How do you get in your opponent's head on D? Are there any little intimidation techniques? Also, how do you bounce out of a poor personal defensive streak? Now, before I go into this, number one, we don't want to be dirty players, right? We don't want to do anything cheap. Um, number two, you don't want to do anything that's going to hurt your team, you know, technicals, extra fouls, all that stuff. So there's a few different things that I like to do to personally get in guys' heads when I'm playing defense. So number one, I like to make them uncomfortable. What you want to do is you want to figure out um, exactly what an offensive player likes to do. After watching them play a little bit, you can figure it out pretty easily. Do they like to drive? Do they like to shoot? Do they like to back you down? Um, you know, when they back you down, is it always a right-handed jump hook? Do they like a step through? These are things that you can probably figure out pretty quick. So the number one thing as a defender is figure out what they like to do and don't let them do it, right? So you want to push them to their weaknesses rather than giving them their strengths. Now, like I said, we don't want to be cheap, but there's kind of things that you can do to push the line a little bit. Little jersey tugs, little tiny mini bumps with your shoulder, your hip, all things to let them know that you're there and you're taking away their airspace. So that's just kind of a little bit of stuff that you can do. Personally, my one of my favorite things to do that I've found works really, really well is to be a frenemy to them. 
And when I talk, when I say frenemy, I mean this. As they get onto the court and you start guarding them, you kind of start um, being friendly to them. Um, and what I like to do is I like to try to get them to turn on their own team rather than focus their aggression at me. Because a lot of times if you piss somebody off, if you bump them, if you shove them, a lot of people play better when they're angry. So I've seen it before, you know, somebody tries to get in a player's head, they do bump, they do some cheap stuff. All of a sudden that player goes off, right? Because that flip or that switch is flipped. So instead I like to get them angry at their own team. So what I'll do is I'll be kind of friendly, I'll chat them up at the free throw line, you know, I'll joke around with them a little bit. And then what I try to do is I try to get them to turn on their team. So if they make like a nice cut and their, their teammate doesn't see them and misses it, I'll say something like, oh man, that was a great cut you had me on that one. That was an easy layup if they give you the ball. Or, um, you know, maybe if somebody on their team takes a, takes a poor shot, running back down the court, I might say something like, man, that was a terrible shot. I can't believe they didn't swing the ball to you. Um, just stuff like that. They can, a lot of times guys will kind of break down mentally and they'll start being like, yeah, why didn't they swing the ball to me? That's crap. And then they start to push the issue a little bit. They start to force it. Um, you know, so there's been multiple times I'll say stuff like that to a guy a couple times down the floor. Next time down, he chucks up a terrible shot that he would normally never shoot, but because you've gotten in his head a little bit and in kind of a friendly way, so he doesn't even really understand what's going on, um, you can kind of submarine it that direction. That's one of my personal favorite things. Um, so try it out and see if it works for you being the friend of me. I don't forget if you're new to shot mechanics, you're going to want to do two things. Number one, hit that subscription button. So we're putting out like five videos every week and I want you to get better. Number two, um, you can either click the annotation up above or the link in the description to get a free copy of our top three favorite shooting secrets. Now these are shooting secrets that a lot of you guys have already put into your game and some of you guys are seeing improvements overnight. So it's 100% free. Check it out. That one's on me. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget if you have a question for me, leave it in the comment section down below and I just might answer it next week. Keep asking questions and I'll keep answering. Thanks for watching.